Hello, my name is Emily Bynan and today I'm going to talk about breathing. Now why do we need to learn how to breathe at all? It's something we do without even thinking about it between 18 and 23,000 times a day. But of course, everyday breathing is very different from flute playing breathing. In day-to-day -day life, if I ask you to take a deep breath and then let it go, the action is taking the air in and the relaxation is letting the air out. For flute playing, it's completely the opposite because the action is the blowing part. We're creating a resistance in our body so that we don't lose all our air in one go. And then the relaxation part is when the air can come into your body. Now this is the resonating chamber. So it's very important that this stays very relaxed and open through the whole process. Just take care that you don't collapse here as you blow out. It should stay up through the whole blowing process. It's also important that the throat stays open when you're breathing. So think about how you yawn. And that's about the position that you want to let the maximum amount of air in, in the shortest space of time. Now, I have a problem with the terminology of breathing. I don't think that we take a breath. I think that we create the space to be filled with air. And how many of us have been told that we need to work on our breathing? Actually, what's meant is that we need to work on our relaxation so that we can create the biggest space possible to let the most air in. And don't forget to use your ears when you're practicing breathing exercises, not for taking in air, but for making sure that you listen to the sound. So let's talk a little bit about our breathing apparatus, our lungs, and they are housed underneath the rib cage. Underneath the lungs, we have the diaphragm. When the diaphragm is in its flattest position, a vacuum is created in the lungs and air is drawn in. As the diaphragm relaxes and becomes more and more of a dome shape, the air is pushed out of the lungs until the diaphragm is flattened again. Now the thing is, we can't control the diaphragm. It's what's known as an involuntary muscle. It keeps going day and night as long as you live. What we can use, however, are the abdominals. So as you blow out through the flute, the abdominals contract and come in and up, pushing the air out of the lungs. Until you have time to breathe, then you can relax those muscles and the air comes in. I find it a useful visualization to think of a pair of bellows and where the air comes out of the bellows, that remains a constant. But that the widest part where the handles are, that's where we get the most motion. And we can equate that to the belly or the abdominals underneath the navel. And do incorporate some breathing exercises into your daily practice routine. It doesn't need to be long, a few minutes are enough, but just make sure it's consistent and it gives your body the chance to make that switch from the day-to-day -day breathing to your flute playing breathing. So let's get started with the first exercise. And I'm going to use the odd metronome again because I think it's got a lovely click. We're just going to put it on 60. I'm going to give you three preparatory clicks and then on the fourth, take a breath in. And then we're going to go five beats out and three beats in. We'll do that twice. And then we'll go six beats out and two beats in. The third step, seven beats out, one beat in. And then the last step is seven and a half beats out and a half beat in. So it's very important to keep your chest up and your shoulders open as you're blowing out in this exercise. No collapsing. If you like, you can use the sound to create some resistance. You don't have to, but I find it helps. All the movement happens underneath your navel, in the belly. That's where you'll feel the most movement. And use all the given beats for the in or the out part of the breath. 
and keep listening for the sound. When it's time to let the air in, drop your jaw. Remember thinking of the yawning and make your body as large as possible in order to let the maximum air in. And do use actions to help you visualize what's happening with the air. I use the hand forward or back, or sometimes I like to use the idea of the beach ball as the, you're blowing out and then you fill it again and the beach ball fills up. Here we go. In, out, two, three, four, five. In, two, three, out, two, three, four, five. In, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six. In, two, out, two, three, four, five, six. In, two, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In, stop. So that's a super simple exercise and you can expand it and change it around, mix it up, work on what you find the most difficult. Okay, and now let's move on to the second exercise. It's another counted exercise. Again, you're gonna hear three preparatory clicks and on the fourth one, you're gonna take a breath in and then we're gonna breathe out for seven counts, in for one. We'll do that twice, out for seven, in for one. And then out for eight, and in for one, twice. And then out for nine, in for one, twice. Out for 10, in for one, twice. Out for 11, in for one, twice. And that's as far as I'm gonna to go today, but you can adjust it to your needs. So here we go. In, out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. In, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, in, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, in, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, in, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, in, stop. And that's another super simple exercise which you can change to suit your needs. Make sure that you breathe in for the entire one beat that you have and that you blow out evenly through the beats that you have to blow out. Now let's move on to the next exercise. This next exercise, Extreme Breathing, is adapted from the first exercise in Peter Lucas Graf's book, Checkup. 
but I practice it without the flute. And the reason for that is if I'm playing a very long note until I run out of air on the flute, then I'll get distracted by the end of the note by thinking about the quality of the sound and maybe the pitch. I want this to be a pure breathing exercise. The other reason I like to do this exercise without the flute is because this is an extreme breathing exercise and I can go so much further without needing my flute playing breath, if you like. I want you to think about what that means. I'm going to talk about flute playing air and talking air. As I'm blowing out at a certain point, I'll realize that now I probably wouldn't be able to produce a sound on the flute, but I'll still be able to keep talking. So it's very important that you think about where that point is for you. I'm going to talk you through the various steps of this exercise, but before I do, I just want to remind you that it's really important that as you're blowing out, you keep your chest up and you keep your throat open. So step one, take a normal breath. Step two, blow out all the air that you could normally use for playing the flute. And you will then, at that point, switch over to your speaking voice. It doesn't matter what you say, as long as you use a resonant voice and a sostenuto sound. So today I'll say the alphabet A, B, C, D, and so on. When that air runs out, and this is the next step, I want you to count to three, one, two, three, and on the fourth, I want you to relax all the muscles underneath your navel and your belly and let the air in. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So that's a really intense exercise. It's not called extreme breathing for nothing. Do have a little rest after you've done one complete cycle and I certainly wouldn't aim to do more than two or maybe three in one practice session. And to finish up today, I've got three little tips. The first is, don't forget that air is free. It's the opposite of money. When we're running out of money, we save. When you're running out of air, blow. It means that the next breath that you take will be much deeper and much healthier. And that way you can get out of a spiral of losing control of your breath in a performance situation much more easily. And the second tip is to relax. Relax your throat, relax your chest, and let go of any tension in your belly. And the third and final tip is to keep listening to the breath. You can learn so much by listening to how the air coming into your body sounds. Is that sound as low as possible? That will give you a good sign that your throat is relaxed and that you're not collapsing your chest. So I hope you've enjoyed this. See you next time.